I could do anything in the world today, is it what I'm doing right now? And if it isn't, I'm wasting my time. That's the first simple HR question I ask myself. The second question I ask myself is, when I'm 105 years old, and I'm talking to my great-great-grandchildren, and I have to describe what I'm doing today, do I have any regret in that? Any things that I wish I didn't do? If that's true, I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing today as well. I'm wasting my time. Uh, Richard Louie is a news anchor for HLN. It ranks 15 years of international business experience to his current reporting. He is the first Chinese American male to anchor a daily national newscast. Let's give uh, Mr. Richard Louie a very uh, I see my brain as a small bookshelf and it's got 10 books on it and every time I learn something I put a book up on the left side and one falls off on the right and then I learn something else I put up on the left side and one falls off on the right and so I, I really need to learn how to learn right and that's the way most of our brains work we think that we can remember everything in the world and we can't so learning to learn is extremely important I'm a car fanatic, a grease monkey. In fact, you know, I started working on cars very early in my life. I love tinkering with cars. In fact, it all started when I was 10 years old. It, my brother was trying to install a, a turbo kit in his car, and he was down to the last bolt, and, but his hand was too big. I was 10 years old, I had my pajamas on, and I was watching him. He said, Richard, come on over here. And I was a guy that was able to put in that last bolt. And that was the first bolt of many to come. In fact, I want to show you a picture, if I can, of uh, what was the pinnacle of my wrenchdom. This is the car. I don't know if you can tell in these pictures, but there's no door handles or side view mirrors. I took them out, because that was cool. That was really cool. But you know, when the battery wasn't working and the remote went open the door for me, you know, I was always like, you know, how do I get in there? Very difficult. It was also lowered two inches. Any good Asian American male would lower or slam their car. Uh, <laughs> And I am one of those, so it was slammed. Uh, it also had headers that I put in, nitrous oxide and Borla 403 stainless steel exhaust system. It was, I, I love this thing. Um, I loved it so much I took a picture of it with me. There it is. Yeah. Uh, uh. Now, I I'm going to zoom in a little. Uh, Notice the 80s ensemble here. Uh, we've got the Depeche Mode hair. Uh, long one side, short on the other. We, we've got uh, here the lumberjack shirt. And of course, we've got the peg jeans. But what's with the white jeans? Who wears white jeans nowadays, right? Uh, bankruptcies, bailouts, pension funds, it's all been said. And so the question is, you know, how do we get back that leadership that I was talking about and that I love so much about my car specifically. Transformation for sure, but not necessarily transformation of cutting costs and desperation, but instead transformation in an evolutionary manner. And that's what I'd like to talk about today, and specifically on the personal level, personal innovation, if you will. And I mean personal innovation from the perspective of having an ability to provide some unique ideas, but also the ability to turn that competency back on ourselves to recreate ourselves, to meet what we want to do and our desires and not bowing to the constraints that exist around us. Now, my grandfather was a Chinese farmer, and he came to the United States in the late 1920s. Uh, there was a depression just about get, you know, moving about that time of the, the uh, history of our country, and there wasn't a lot of demand for a Chinese farmer in San Francisco, uh, so he had some trouble, no doubt. This is what he saw, soup lines, people who couldn't even afford to buy an apple. And these are some of the things that we see today in different ways and, of course, at different levels. So my grandfather decided he was going to quit farming, and he decided he was going to try to become a barber. Now, I'm not sure how translatable skills are from being <laughs> to a uh, barber. And my dad will testify, there's not a lot of transferable skills there. 
he, he will argue that uh, my grandfather wasn't so good. And, you know, something that comes to mind for me is certainly like my grandfather going like this was a machete that used him to feel wham, 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 you know, even after my grandfather practicing on him for so long. My dad's hearing's not so good, but he still has his two ears. But, you know, that's what my grandfather did. He changed his profession and his skill set. And over the years, he got pretty good. In fact, there were there started to be some pictures that were on the walls, you know, of uh, some of the local politicians, some of the, the people that were important in the city. So, you know, he was doing well for himself. And that new job, it transformed him. Him and his family of 13 children, they all were able to eat, they are all able to go to school, and they are all able to go to college. So I've tried to do the very same thing in my career. Be unafraid of learning to cut hair when all I know how to do is hoe fields. And my personal innovation has taken me through four or five very different careers. And I called up my dad and I said, uh, Dad, uh, we sold the business. He's like, yeah, all right, good. You know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to become a journalist. And I'm going to work for this network in Singapore. And I'm going to be an anchor there instead of going back to Mercer Management Consulting in New York. My dad laughed. But the question might be, as you're saying, oh, Richard, this sounds all nice, but you know, how will you know if you've made that leap, that innovation leap that we've been uh, talking about? How have you learned to cut that hair when all you knew how to do was hoe that field? Well, one indicator, I believe, is that you discover you aren't who you thought you were, which brings me back to my grandfather. You see, my, my grandfather actually came here legally, and this is the paper at the time from 1882. It's the Chinese Exclusion Act. And he had to come to the United States illegally because at that time this act said no non-elite could come to the United States from China. It was the only act of its type ever in the history of the United States. So what he did is he bought fake papers and became what's known as a paper son, a fake son on paper of a legal US family. He bought a new name and thus a new family, giving up his birth name so he could come to the United States. So at the age of 40, my dad was not who he thought he was. And I wasn't who I thought I was. Not only in name, but in my own history. And so I finish with this story because that is what I believe a personal innovation is what it has been for me, realizing you are not who you thought you were. After a death, perhaps, a rebirth in the end. Thanks.